so two days on the road. I think I have to take really a shower. It was so exhausting, but I'm here. It is so hot here. So let me show you a little bit around. This is my little you know, dining room apartment. This is where I will work. Um, I think I, I was just told I have the best, best internet, so that's really good. And here I show you my wonderful, wonderful sleeping area. So let me show you here around. I think it's pretty beautiful. It has a really wonderful spirit. And then outside the community, um, how do you say that? The community members are singing right now. So there is very good spirit in the air. It's very different. So it was a very good decision to go for a while and leave Germany. People are very, very happy here and dancey and um, talkative, but they're also here for mind training. So the community living has the, um, it, of course, a miracle has the intention to search your mind and do the mind training so that you can let go of all the layers, all the patterns that are filter systems to keep you from the essence of who you really are. I'm always saying I would talk more about it and I will, but I'm so tired, but I wanted to keep it as authentic as possible. No shower, no makeup for sure. And just, you know, show you around. This is my walk, walk in closet. Do you say there's walk in closet? So here you see I'm unpacking my stuff. Let's then go to the bathroom. Yes, I do have a whole apartment. So here is my bathroom. My neighbor is from America. His name is Mike. He is awesome. He's, he seems to be a sweetheart, which is great. So I don't want to disturb him right now. Um, but we do share a kitchen together and a kind of a lunch and dining room. Just let me show you one moment. Oh yeah, he's having a call. So I keep it a little bit here. It is so hot, so hot. I mean, hot. Did I say hot? We do have snow in Munich right now in Germany or in the southern part. I think even Hamburg had snow, which is the northern part of um, Germany. And it's very seldom. My mother, she lives in Hamburg, as she told me. And now I go to my terrace. So let me just open the door. Here are mosquitoes, so I better close it. I do think I need to do a little bit of cleaning here from the terrace. German crazy woman they will think. So here you see oversee. Here you can see in the back. I hope yes you can see it's really in the back there's Lake Chapala. It's a really big lake but people don't swim in the lake unfortunately because I'm such a swimmer and there is the pool. Here there you see a moment. There you see the pool. You can hear our community members singing. They are singing in the room let me see there, you see a little house. That's a house where they're singing. And I said, oh, I love singing, as long as I don't have to do a solo. But that seems to be part of it. So they're like, oh gosh, that's another part to let go of shame. So here is, and here's where I'm going to do, you know, sit and do my ballet training and do my hip hop. I taught Mike already, Mike already. he might join for my swing classes. I do my classes at Pineapple Dance Studios in London. So I do swing, Charleston, salsa, musical. So here I think I will make it a big training room. I get a yoga mat. I get some walking sticks because, but the, the, the roads are so different from what we are used to have proper roads and streets. It's absolutely, absolutely not comparable. I've been in Brazil in a very poor part of Brazil, but that's topping here. So it was a little bit of shock that it's supposed to be a very nice area and so far what I see and of course this community is a very wonderful area but I was shocked that it's a very poor area so I saw the pharmacy and I saw some of the supermercado the supermarkets and yeah what can I say I was like okay this is where you're going to stay for how long whoever however long it's going to be so I think I showed you around um, no, there's nothing. I'm just looking. Now, this will look a bit different, as I told you. Um, gosh, it's a big cleaning job I have to do, I think. And did I talk about my cleaning magic woman in Germany? I could use her right now. Sorry, I think it stopped for a second. So I'm going in again. And here are also some flamenco dancers and some salsa dancers I heard from Mexico. So I will get to know them. 
So far, there is a man from Los Angeles, a woman from Netherlands. I heard that they're from Mexico, from Spain. So we investigate into that. And everybody's coming to this community in order to either completely left their lives in um, their hometown, or they come here for a while to retreat, do some inner work, some mind search, or like what I do, really align myself again with my inner guidance and inner direction, which was for me in the end, with all the hustle and all the tension we had in Germany, just not possible anymore. So I think I have everything. Yes, now I go back into my living area. I don't want to disturb Mike because he's having a Zoom call. So happy that I have the best internet here. Gosh, I'm happy. And I have the biggest room here also. I mean, and I was in the airplane. I had three, two seats next to me. They were totally empty. They were the only seats um, which were empty and they were mine. So I had a whole role to myself and I thought, I think I'm pretty much guided. I'm very grateful. So let me share you one story before I say goodbye. I take a shower. I get some fruits and some veggies for the dinner. Oh, yeah, that was kind of a journey. So I went to, as you know, I waited in Cancun and um, I went very quickly to check in my bags. So I thought, why did they say two hours before? And she said, oh, it's going easy. I said, can I go out and just wait outside the airport? And she said, yeah, no big deal. You're, you know, checking in at 1230. And I thought, oh, great. Yes. And I sat outside. I, you know, I st um, stayed and recorded my little video for you guys. And then it was a little bit late, but still, you know, if everything goes smooth, it's still early enough. So then I stand there, it's a, it's a crowded row. So I, so many people are waiting to go through the check-in. I think like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then that was not the point. The point comes now because then I wanted to go in and then one of the ladies and they are like a little bit like Americans. When you go to the check-in in America or you fly into America as a foreigner, you know how people are there. Very bossy, very strict, non-negotiable uh, non and absolutely non-relatable and very much on distance. So these are the ladies and in Mexico it was a little bit different. They wore, they either they don't understand it or they're completely shut down. So they have like a wall. When you ask them questions, they don't care. They just leave, leave you standing there. So she, she said, you need to have the formula for COVID um, to fly further. And I said, which formula? I had so many QR codes and so many formulas, but I didn't have that one. And my assistant made sure that I wouldn't miss anything. So I panicked a little because, you know, my time was running. There was a whole crowd in front of me. And then she, she said, there's a sign there you have to inform yourself. And I don't know how you guys are a bit, but if I'm late and I just see a code and I see I have to do a digital, if I have to do digital things, technical things in a few minutes, I have no idea. I really go empty. I go blank. I go in pure panic. It's like nothing works in my mind anymore. And I'm not exaggerating. It's really hard. So normally I always take, give myself some time to get used to new things or where I have to fill in some stuff, but I didn't. And I, most of it was in Spanish, so I couldn't even understand it. And my, my, my flight was starting to bore it. So I got really, really um, in, in panic. I panicked. And then there was this beautiful young man, or I just don't know, he was um, from Mexico, but his English was really great. And he was standing with me in front of the sign where we had to um, put the iPhone, a smartphone in front of the coat so long until there's a sign, now you can go further, but you have to understand it. I mean, you have to understand what you have to do. And I looked at him and he must have seen the panic and the terror in my eyes. And I said to him, please help. My flight is boarding in five minutes. I, and there's a whole, you know, the, the line is so long, please help. And he stood next to me and then he filled out the form with me because some parts were in Spanish. I didn't even understand. And then he got stuck. We didn't get further. My time was running, running. We were already, I think it took already 10 minutes. You know, my flight was already boarding. And then he waved to his um, friend. He came. He was a really interesting man and he helped. He was so quiet. I really have to say it was, he felt like an earth angel. And then it didn't go through. We couldn't send the formula because without sending it, it wouldn't accept it and the code wouldn't come up and without that code, I couldn't enter. So my flight was boarding, boarding, boarding. There was still this amazing long line. I was still not, it got stuck. There was always saying error. Now my dear friend who helped me so far got a little bit nervous too. So this man comes in like my earth angel and 
then he helped and then you know before i was like i think it was just starting to get ready and show up then um he looked me very deep in my eyes like this but his eyes were he was a very handsome man i have to say so he was a handsome earth angel and he didn't say anything and in his eyes i could really feel them in my heart and my body um he signalized you are going to be okay you are going to be okay he was very calm and be, we all have masks so you just can't see the eyes but you now looking in his eyes and seeing his 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 handsome physics and his calm it just gave me a boost and then i said to him what am i doing can you please tell the lady that she brings me from because my flight is already boarding since 15 minutes and he's he talked to her but she she was this one woman she said she had this wall in front of her her body she nodded me she didn't say it on her stand she just didn't care she just not she didn't care at all and i got really angry and frustrated but she absolutely didn't respond she didn't care she just stood there like stone so i waved him back i could see him again he looked at me i waved him back i said please um she doesn't help and then another man jumped in and he had all kinds of stuff on his mask it was very funny i had to, even i had to laugh in my panic attack and then he said you just go and crawl under i don't know under um limitations i don't know how you say this in english sorry you just crawl under you don't go into the line you don't ask her so i took my baggage and i had way too much baggage i never ever do this again but i had you know i was so lucky to have business class with my mother so i was packed for business class Ugh, idiot me so i'm crawling under all the limitations i'm i'm you know i'm going and i'm always sorry sorry my, my flight is boring i'm so sorry i'm so sorry because you know everybody stands in line they see me crawling on the ground and with all my luggage they think this is the most nuts case ever we've seen and then i stand again in a line where she needs the coat again and she needs my passport and she needs a boarding pass again another coat everything is you always have it on you know screenshots so you always have to look for the right coat and she just couldn't care less again i said look my flight is boring since 20 minutes now i really need to get to check in please but by then I, I think almost water was coming in my eyes because i was thinking in panic what am i doing if my flight is going with my suitcases my luggage and then i have to go all the way back to cancun get another hotel check in with my um, luggage find my luggage again so <sighs> And then people were not very friendly, but of course I said to everybody, my flight is boarding. So then I just was, it was my turn. And she was so nasty, but then of course she did it. And that from then on, it go, went quickly. It goes to check in, that goes really quick. They couldn't care less. So it's not as strict as I'm used to it in, in Europe or Northern Europe. And then I, I rush, everything goes quick. I rush, I still have 15 minutes to go, but 15 minutes until departure is not long. And then I look at the sign, the sign starts at two, but my flight goes at 1.15. So I think like one, two, where, where's my flight? And then I go back to the check-in and I ask one Spanish woman and she, her English is not so good. Well, fair enough. And she goes with me to the sign, but I try to tell her, look, the flights don't start before two. I need to go at 1.15 is my flight. And it's one, one o'clock now or one three. I just have another 12 minutes. And, um, she clearly couldn't understand. She didn't understand why she didn't. So I just go somewhere and then I'm asking around and asking and running around. And then there is a lady and then there was a sign. Finally, I found a sign that had the right times. And I saw A and I'm running up the stairs, but then it's not, it was, I don't know, A4. You, you would wish that A4 was, meanwhile, it's one of five or one or seven. And my flight is departing at 1.15 and they're closing also gates normally at 10 minutes before, at least in Germany. So I'm running, running, running at A4. It's not showing up, not showing up. I'm sweating, I'm all my winter clothes on because I was leaving with snow. So this is how I was dressed and it was so hot. So I'm finally arriving at gate eight, gate eight four. I'm not seeing any signs anymore if it's Guadalajara. I'm just asking in panic, is it Guadalajara? I think, yes, it's second group. And I think, what? All the people. So my, my flight is so delayed. So I'm sitting there, sweat is running down my, running my body down my body. I, I really am so wet. 
and I'm sitting there and just waiting and then I'm standing in line and what they do when you when you board it's like you 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 know they have this pistol against your hat that they um look for if you have fever or not how's your temperature and then um they give you synthesizers right away do you say that synthesizer uh, well I'm very tired so I apologize for my bad English will be better again so sanitizers sanitizers I think yes I will look it up in the dictionary before I talk again and I have my whole my hands everything is full of my iPhone my coats my passport and my baggage and then she sprays it on my arm and I think yeah well how what am I going to do moving forward putting sanitizer in my hands so I drop everything I uh, occupy the line uh, put it you know everybody puts it in his or her hands for a couple of seconds which is fair enough but then I was in my plane and then it was so easy. Then I was so, and I had my, you know, my role for myself, as I told you. And then I jump into the taxi, which was quite fair enough. You know, that went really good, but they don't have any trolleys. So you have to know that there are always people coming and helping you. So because I couldn't even half of my luggage managed by myself. And then the man I come up with my trolley, a man said, oh, you're, you know, you're not allowed to take the trolley. You were supposed to leave it in the hallway where the baggage is arriving. I thought like, what's the point of having a trolley if I cannot having my trolley to the taxi? So I got a little bit irritated again. Um, no sleep and you know, so, and he said, do you need a help? I said, yeah, help, 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 help. Let me sit down actually, talking about help. Let me sit down. <sighs> ah, help, help. So a man comes and I want to ask how much is the tip so they didn't get it. I think just give them a lot of tip right now. No, don't care about you have lost so much money already. Give a lot of tip. You are so helpful. You're so grateful for any kind of help. And then I get into my taxi and we're going to Lake Shapala. Very nice taxi drivers. Very sweet, really sweet, kind, upside kind hearted people. And then I see this is getting hot. I mean, it was hot but it was not that hot in Cancun it was very windy so the wind was actually now I can see that the wind has a beauty to it because I'm not a wind person but it did have beauty here there's absolutely no wind no hot wind hot it's like almost you can't breathe and I think like oh my gosh how am I going to survive that one well anyway I'm here and um that's the story how I got here. I have no idea. I think I talked with Mike and he said, how long you're staying? I said, well, I actually until end of April, but I, because we have another hard lockdown and in Germany, and that might mean that we're not supposed or cannot leave the house even during the day. And I said, look, this is really affecting my, my work and my business right now. I'm self-employed. Um, we do get a little bit of money. I seem to also get through that part now in Germany but that will with the high, high fixed costs I'm having that will not even cover two months or barely two months if if at all um, and the way how it looks right now and if it's not moving it's affecting the client my clients my clients cannot have any contracts right now so they're on contract stop it's just really affecting everything and I said to him I will need to start working again so I might just rent a house here which is not very expensive in Ahihik and I because otherwise I'm here where people are community livers and you know really take the time for spirit and for the spiritual journey and I said my, I'm a very different energy and <laughs> I think I get give, give people nuts when I'm working here and I have productions and I'm zoom calls so that might just be hard to be around. And he said, yes, fair enough, I can understand. But you know, it, it, it's so much living in the now and that's what they're teaching here also, to really live in the now, to be comfortable with not knowing the next step. So this was my next step. I'm, I'm very, very happy that I got that step. I also think that this was my guidance to rest my mind, to align again with my inner guidance so that I have clear directions where my calling goes, where my contribution goes and what I can smartly do and meaningfully do in order not only to survive this lockdowns and this whole economic economy disaster that's still going to show itself, but also to be a strong anchor for others and to be of help for others. While of course I have to fill my own tank first. So this is the journey and this is a purpose quest. And um, 
I was pretty much on my knees before I left because you know when when your income is so much in danger and when people who are working with you closely say they have absolutely budget stop or very very small budgets you need to find ways what in order to survive and what to do and if that goes on for a couple of weeks a couple of months but if it has no perspective um, and shops are closing around you and people are getting depressed and are getting aggression aggressive and there's no absolutely no sign where it stops i just i just was not able to listen to anything anymore nor to meditate and i could pick up the energy from outside here i feel already the rest around me so here you don't feel you're in lockdown at all um and people in mexico they are not strict like they were not strict at all in the in the airplane but for them, it's like self-evident. Everybody has masks and sanitizers and, you know, they spray it all the time. They're kind with that. But there's not a kind of controlling each other. It's more like you let people do what they choose to do. If you have an FFP2 mask or an operate surgery mask, or if you have it off your nose or under your nose, they don't care. And, you know, they're a bunch of people. Then they get very crowded. They stand very close to each other. In the plane next to me, there was a dog. And the dog was not in a cage. He was just sitting there. He was just running around. The stewardess des des really liked him. So it was very cute. And I thought there is a beauty to it. But I would definitely say to everybody, if you are half, you know, according to the historian and scientist, Daniel Ganser, who is from Switzerland, he observed that people have three fears who are so triggered in this time. The fear of corona and death, the fear of totality and death, the fear of existen existential fear and death. It all relates to, it comes down to death. So everybody is, of course, so afraid to die, including myself. But sometimes I think, why are we not afraid? Look at the fear of living and become livers again and not just be automized and soldiers and um, just marionettes and just going through life and functioning while not starting to be lively and look at the essence of life and just look at the essence of death. Um, but that will be definitely another video bite. Um, what I wanted to say is um, if you have, if you're triggered more with the fear of Corona, I don't think that Mexico would be the country because people are crowded, they're coming together. I mean, everybody is wearing masks also outside. They don't seem to care really. That's what they are told to, that they were informed and they just do that. Um, but I think it can be, if you really, if you, if you love the strictness and the rules, Germany is definitely a part where to be in. Um, I think that Northern Europe is not so much different. France and, and Netherlands where I was born and England, but this is not the country to travel to. That's what I would say. But I heard that in Spain, Tenerife, people felt very, very secure. Um, like Cancun, my resort was completely crowded. So there were lots of people. Um, so this is so far what I can say from my trip, from my purpose quest. And now my throat is really dry. I get some water, I get some veggies. I definitely take a shower and I unpack my stuff and I will do a holy deep sleep, go back and go to bed early. And I'm so grateful for the strongest internet here. So having said this, totally without makeup, totally unauthentic, not even showered. I said, this is a good journey for you, Janine. Just dropping your vanity, drop your vanity because I come from public radio and broadcasting service where we had great lightning. I knew how to set the stage, the light, the camera, myself, dress myself, that I could look my best. And um, it's just, you know, an art. It's just nothing, you know, you can't, everybody can look beautiful. You just have to understand how camera works and how the setting works. So I could do this to mastery. And now I have nothing, no light, no nothing. Oh, I also had always the best makeup artists and they absolutely knew how to do things. So I, I used to be a beauty queen in front of camera when everything was set in motion. Now I have nothing. Good, good, le good learning was 55 or 54. Oh, I'm 54. Goodness, I'm not 55. To drop that and drop your vanity and go without makeup and very authentic, without a shower. You cannot smell it, but I just smell it. And start a journey like this, naked, authentic, 44, no, 54, I have to.